Today, a new app called Colin is launching, and it aims to be a tool for social podcasting. And while it does have live capabilities, what makes it different is that users can save the audio after and edit it within the app and turn it into a podcast. Joining us now is David Sachs. He's co-founder of Colin and a general partner at Craft Ventures. He's also former COO of PayPal. David, thanks for talking to us today. Thank you for having me, Julia. So, David, I know you're a podcaster yourself, but you've invested in so many different companies and industries. Why get into the social audio space when it's already so crowded? Well, because I don't think the problem has really been been solved of how you make podcasting really easy. So for about the last year and a half, I've been doing this pod with a few friends called the All In Pod. We started doing it during COVID because it was the only way we could see each other. And it kind of kept us sane. And uh, I just I learned a lot about podcasting from doing that. And what I discovered is just actually how difficult it is. About six hours of post-production goes into every episode of the, the, the pod that we do. And if it wasn't for my bestie, Jason, who you guys know well, I never, never would have figured it out. Um, so what I set out to do with this team is make podcasting as simple as just pushing a button. It's like starting a room in a, on a social audio site, but instead of the content being ephemeral, it gets recorded and saved. And then you can do post-production in the app. We automate all of that sort of sound engineering away so you don't have to worry about it. And then you can publish it and share it on social media. So no one has really uh, bridged or combined these concepts of social audio and podcasting before. And that's what we've done in this app. We've, we call it social podcasting. It's really a new experience that hasn't existed before. Interesting. Now, I want you to put this in context of your other investments. Um, you know, we've been talking so much on this show about fintech. Uh, you invested in a firm which earlier this week announced a big deal with Amazon. Do you see more opportunity in the fintech space now? And how transformative do you think these big deals like the partnership between a firm and Amazon will be for this buy now, pay later space? Yeah, I think it's going to be huge because obviously Amazon is the biggest player in e-commerce and this is going to expose a lot more transaction volume to these, you know, to like you said, the buy now, pay later space. Um, I, I was a, a C investor in a firm, just full disclosure. Um, I supported Max back when this was just a, a, his idea, a seed company. And it's been amazing to see what he's done with it. Uh, we, you know, we also sold them a company uh, last year called Returnly, which uh, provides, uh, which advances credit against returns, which is kind of similar to the way that a firm advances credit against purchases. So I think this whole idea of extending credit at the point of sale, which is what Max came up with, is a, a brilliant idea. A lot of people aren't ready to make the sort of the pay the full purchase price at the time of sale, and they need uh, help sort of spacing out the payments, but they don't want to pay credit card fees with all the surprise penalties. And so, you know, what Max has done here at a firm is create a new way for people to uh, get credit at the point of sale. It's pretty amazing.